I give you the floor on yesterday's news that it was David Ortiz and only David Ortiz that uh, earned enshrinement into Cooperstown. Bob, you know, there are distinctions to be made, and I think we all made these points yesterday on the Major League Baseball Network during mm-hmm. the marathon coverage we had. There are distinctions even within those who are connected in some sense to PEDs. In the case of David Ortiz, he shows up on the 2003 survey testing. A, the results were not supposed to be connected to any individual. They were trying to find out if, as a group, the level of use was high enough to institute testing and penalties to go along with it, and the results should have been destroyed once they had the total uh, macro number. The micro didn't matter. Plus, apparently, there were at least 10, maybe more, false positives within it, or there could have been positives from things that you got that were not illegal, either by law or by uh, what baseball uh, planned uh, to put on a list of banned substances. And that doesn't mean that that automatically acquits David Ortiz in that circumstance, but it creates enough doubt. Plus, no matter what people might speculate about, the bulk of his career played out when there was testing and he never tested positive. So I think that he's in a different category than someone like A-Rod, uh, who was suspended a couple of times, who sued baseball, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Great a player as A-Rod was, you put him in a different category. Different category than Manny Ramirez. Um, different category than Bonds and Clemens, whose careers predated testing for the most part, and when there was testing, somehow they evaded it. Uh, toward the ends of their careers, but it's pretty clear, especially in Bond's case, uh, Clemens was probably able to sustain and maybe regain uh, a certain standing because of PED use, but Bonds, who was already one of the greatest players of all time, was transformed from a genuinely great player to a superhuman player who turned baseball into a video game. So they're, they're all kind of in different categories, and I think the voters parsed David Ortiz differently, and his popularity and his pleasant personality probably didn't hurt him. They parsed that differently uh, than Clemens um, and Bonds, and Kurt Schilling's in an entirely different category. The only guy who in his last year saw his vote total go down, Mm. and not by a little, by a lot. He says, hey, I don't want to be on the ballot. Don't vote for me. And apparently a lot of writers said, okay, if that's what you want, we'll comply. Uh, Kurt, and, but let me say this. As I've said forever, Rich, all three of the guys I just mentioned, Bonds, Clemens, Schilling, if I had a vote, and as you know, only writers do, uh, regardless of what my misgivings might have been with regard to some aspect of their candidacy, I would have voted for all three of those guys. And it should be said that a majority of voters did vote for all three. But the threshold is 75%. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.